Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Duman Singh and our top story. Election board members met on St. Croix Tuesday as we reported and voted on a ballot-related issue that has the potential to cast doubts on the integrity of the election system. This is a case where one might ask, who regulates the regulators, especially when they're making rules that could give them an advantage? News 2's April Knight has that story. The Joint Board of Election has made a decision. Voters will only get one ballot at the polls in November. One ballot, that's color-coded. The board agreed to order uh, about 15,000, a little bit more than 15,000 paper ballots for each, for each district. About 70% um, of all the, the registered voters uh, based on the 2008 and 2012 election. Joint Election Board Chairman Arturo Watlington said a few of them were advocating for more than one ballot. By law, 492, uh, Title 18, 492 said the board should be a separate ballot, a separate paper ballot. The problem with one ballot is that there are election board members running on St. Thomas. This could cause issues, the very least of which is the appearance of impropriety when board members have to make judgment calls on ballots that might get spit out by the machines. Not just touch, but make decisions on any issues having to do with that ballot. Oh. Because if it's all, if it's one ballot with various contests there upon, then regardless of the issue being on one portion of the con of the one contest on the ballot, it can be you know, it can present an issue. This year it's not a problem for St. Croix since there's no board of election race there, but on St. Thomas come November, questions might arise. Reporting for News Two, I'm April Knight. Now on the matter of Alicia Chucky Hansen's court hearing today, Liliana Bellado de O'Neill, St. Croix Election Board Chairperson, told News 2 that the board and election supervisor Fox presented facts and evidence, as did Hansen's camp, but the judge has not made a determination that ruling will be issued by Friday. Count on two, we will keep you updated. Well, police say on Wednesday, September 14th, at approximately 3.50 a.m., two male gunshot victims arrived at the Schneider Regional Medical Center's emergency room. The victims stated they were in the area of Paul M. Pearson Gardens housing community when they heard shots being fired and began to run. Here's more. One victim sustained a gunshot graze to the upper body, while the other victim sustained a gunshot wound to the left side of the body. They were both treated by the emergency doctors for injuries and later released. The scene was processed by the forensic units. The case is presently under investigation by the Criminal Investigations Bureau. Any person having information regarding this incident are asked to contact the Investigations Bureau at 340-774-2211. They can also contact 911 or the anonymous tip line Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIPS. On Monday around 9.23 p.m., officers were dispatched to a robbery in Mont Pleasant, Frederickstead. They spoke with an individual who stated that he was at a residence having a conversation by the roadway when a Hispanic male approached them and pulled out from his waistband what appeared to be a black handgun and waved it at them, making threats. The male asked for the keys and jumped in the vehicle, drove off. Both victims were not injured. This incident is under investigation by the Criminal Investigation Bureau. You can call the Criminal Investigation Bureau at 340-778-2211 or Crime Stoppers. Alejandro Marva Romero, 32, of Venezuela, pleaded guilty today in federal court on St. Croix to possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. On November 13, 2015, Marva Romero and other co-defendants who were on a boat retrieved a load off of cocaine. Uh, mid-sea from another boat. They transported the drugs to St. Croix and offloaded them at a beach called Knights Bay. Law enforcement tracked the boat, returned it to St. Croix, and apprehended Mava Romero and two co-defendants on the beach in close proximity to the suitcases. The suitcases contained 87 kilograms of cocaine. Mava Romero faces up to life imprisonment for the offense and a fine of up to $10 million. District Court Judge Curtis Gomez sentenced today Pedro Beltre Guzman, 35 of the Dominican Republic, to 32 months imprisonment, followed by three years of supervised release for possession of a firearm by an illegal alien. 
Judge Gomez ordered Guzman to pay a $100 special assessment and perform 200 hours of community service. According to evidence presented at trial, on the morning of September 3, 2015, Guzman and co-defendants Gerandino Aracina and Cardona traveled from Fajardo, Puerto Rico to St. Thomas, Virgin Islands in a private vessel equipped with a hidden compartment that contained three assault rifles. Sentencing hearings for Gerandino, Arsina, and Cardona are pending without a date. Lawmakers and education officials had a passionate back and forth at the Senate on Wednesday over a bill that aims to identify high-performing students who belong in the bottom rounds of the socioeconomic ladder. Among other points of disagreement, education officials said they would need more money to implement the bill, but the bill sponsor disagrees. News News April Night has more. Senator Kurt Vialli, a former school principal, is pushing a bill that would address what he says is an excellence gap in VI schools. Bill number 31-0314 would create a system that identifies high-achieving, low-income students. We don't have school choice. So you have to make sure that the programs are at every single school, and it costs nothing. At least one testifier believes that a gifted and talented program does not have to be legislated because it already exists in some form in some VI schools. But according to lawmakers, the problem is the lack of uniformity and standardization. The selection of students who are considered high achieving, for example, varies and can be subjective. I want to be sure that students can know, students and their parents can know that these are the criteria. And if you meet these criteria, you will be able to participate in this. It's not some teacher going to say, well, no, I'm not sure about that one, or, or you know, maybe we should wait till next year. To According to education officials, it's also an issue of funding. You're asking us to increase the budgetary needs, because that means you need to add a new set of teachers. You need to have training for those teachers. But Viale insisted that the bill should not cost money. It does not take any additional money. If you have 100 students, and those 100 students are served by five teachers, what is the difference if you designate 20 of those students as an academically talented? It take any additional teachers? No. It is just how you select and place support the students. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Bill number 31-0314 was approved by the Education Committee. Its next stop is Rules and Judiciary. Well, as Hillary Clinton battles pneumonia, Americans are sizing up the health of both presidential candidates. Donald Trump revealed more of his health information today, but both candidates are under pressure to do more. Scott McLean reports. <coughs> With Hillary Clinton sidelined by pneumonia, Donald Trump is trying to prove he is fit to serve as president. Why not share your medical records? Why not? Well, I have really no problem in doing it. I, I have it right here. I mean, I, should I do it? I don't care. Should I do it? With that, Trump shared a one-page summary of his physical with Dr. Oz. The show released a short clip from the interview. May I see them? Saying, yeah, sure. The full episode of his daytime show is set to air on Thursday. He read through a number of things. And uh, Dr. Oz was, de you know, he was impressed. Most of the time he didn't really answer the questions directly. So it was probably flattering for him. Although I don't think if you're paying attention, he didn't really answer anything. A statement from the show says Dr. Oz reviewed Trump's family medical history, heart health, and medications. Trump has repeatedly questioned Clinton's fitness to serve. But since her pneumonia diagnosis, he has declined to question her health directly. Both candidates have released far less health information than past nominees. The losers are very clearly American voters. We're getting the runaround from both camps at the moment, and until they, you know, are get serious and really give us hard evidence, uh, we can't really make judgments about either candidate's health. Dr. Oz's daytime audience skews predominantly female, giving Trump a platform to win over a demographic he's struggling to connect with. But Trump's overall campaign seems to be gaining strength as polls tighten and a new Bloomberg poll of Battleground, Ohio, shows Trump leading by five points. But Hillary Clinton plans to be healthy and back on the campaign trail tomorrow. In Washington, I'm Scott McClain.
And keeping our eye on the economy, it's Netflix versus internet service providers. The streaming service is asking the FCC to push companies to end the practice, practice of data caps, calling it unreasonable and unfair. Comcast and other home internet providers offer consumer plans with data limits. The more data you want to use, the more it costs. But Netflix says the average American needs an allotment of 300 gigabytes of data per month to meet its internet television needs. Here's a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. The Dow down 31, NASDAQ up 18, S&P 500 also down. Coming up on News 2, remember, you can pick up a free car seat for your young one. Plus, heard about that Honda recall? What you need to know, it's all about safety on the road. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The Virgin Islands Office of Highway Safety will be hosting free car and booster seat clinics. Just a reminder, and it's in celebration of Child Passenger Safety Week. Those are the dates on St. John, Thursday, September 15th at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, Cruise Bay, 10 a.m. to 3. St. Thomas, it's Friday, September 16th at the Anna's Retreat Community Center, which is next to the basketball court in Anna's Retreat. That's from 10 a.m. to 3. Then on St. Croix, Friday, September 23rd at the former St. Dunstan School before the Easterly Building, Christianstead, 10 a.m. to 3. Attendees are asked to bring the child, the child's birth certificate, car registration, and insurance and driver's license. Seats are available while supplies last. The Honda Takata Repair-a-thons continue on St. Thomas this week. John's Auto will be at the Fort Christian parking lot starting tomorrow, Thursday, September 15th, until Saturday, September 17th. Now, if you cannot make it to the three-day event on St. Thomas or last week's Repair-a-thon on St. Croix, please call the numbers on your screen there to arrange another time. Government officials urge drivers to get their cars checked immediately. It's an urgent safety issue, and your Honda or Acura might not be safe. So we're urging the public to go in to, uh, Thursday at the Fort Christian parking lot, Thursday to Saturday, to have their vehicle checked to make sure that the airbags that are in there now are changed. Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works Commissioner Gustav James informs everyone that there will be limited parking in the Fort Christian parking lot in order to host that Honda and Acura airbag inflator repair-a-thon. That's from Thursday through Saturday, September 17th. The western end of the parking lot adjacent to the fort will be unavailable for parking. The parking lot will resume its normal operations on Monday, September 19th. They apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. While well, WAPA continues to make steady progress on the undergrounding project along the Sierra Lee King Airport roadway, the project seeks to expand St. Thomas's feeder 5A to Vitima's headquarters. Today, WAPA crews closed one lane of vehicular traffic on the airport roadway to facilitate conduit installations in a manhole in the base of Sarah Hill. That lane will be closed from 4 to 9 p.m. daily through Friday, September 16th, and on Saturday and Sunday, September 17th and 18th, between 7.30 and 4 p.m., 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Now, when completed at the end of this month, WAP Vitima will be served by two electrical feeders, which will provide greater reliability for the agency's headquarters during disasters and other emergencies. VI Waste Management Authority advises the public and residents that the Melvin Evans Highway, the wastewater line rehabilitation project, which began on Tuesday, September 6, will begin to impact westbound traffic just west of the Diageo stoplight starting on Thursday, September 15. Westbound traffic just west of the Diageo stoplight will be reduced to one lane for about 2,000 feet before returning to two lanes. This traffic pattern is expected to last for about three days, they say. The Melvin Evans Rehabilitation Project represents the continuing efforts of the VI Waste Management Authority to upgrade the aged wastewater infrastructure in the territory. The authority anticipates completion within three weeks. University of the Virgin Islands is participating in the Student Success 
Collaborative, which is an initiative developed by the Education Advisory Board to examine the impact of every aspect of campus life on student retention. UVI is now one of more than 200 institutions of higher education currently implementing this program. The EAB's goal is to help colleges and universities promote a culture of success by incorporating data-driven insights into advising interactions. They will also begin a targeted advising campaign that will focus on students who need specific types of interventions. EAB is a data collection and analytics team, analysis team that combines SSC campus technology, research, process improvement, and predictive analytics to assist UVI staff and faculty with hard hardwiring student success throughout the university. While the public is invited to celebrate BVI, USVI Friendship Day at a special cultural program beginning at 10.30 a.m. Saturday, September 17th at the Reichel Center for the Arts on St. Thomas. A delegation of government officials and civic leaders from the British Virgin Islands will travel to St. Thomas to take part in activities celebrating the special relationship between the United States and British Virgin Islands. Governor Mapp urged residents to attend Saturday's program which will include remarks from representatives from both the USVI and BVI. Now this year marks the 43rd official commemoration of the friendship between the islands. Speaking of friendship, the Virgin Islands Department of Education Division of Cultural Education, they're presenting the first Hispanic Heritage Month Forum. This year's theme is Hispanic women empowering their community and the world. Prominent members of the community will be featured panelists. Schools and students will be in attendance. It will be held on Thursday, September 15th at UVI's Great Hall from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Carnival Corporation is going green in a big way with three new mega ships slated for delivery in 2020 and 2022. The Miami-based cruise company said Tuesday that the vessels will be powered by liquefied natural gas, considered to be the cleanest burning fossil fuel. Two of the new ships will be built for Carnival Cruise Line, making them the first LNG-powered ships in North America. With capacity for 5,200 passengers each at double occupancy, the two new vessels will also be the largest for the cruise line, which already has a fleet of 25 ships plus the Carnival Horizon set for delivery in 2018. And speaking of cruise ships, the West Indian Company is welcoming back to school the educators, students, parents, indeed the whole family, with an uplifting evening of jazz on the dock featuring WEN, who will perform from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. on Tuesday, September 20th. Come to the docks, they say, and groove with the sweet sounds of jazz under the leadership of Wang Harrigan. Join the 15-member band of talented local musicians as they wear pink ribbons to demonstrate their commitment to the community, education on cancer prevention as well. Now, the Norwegian escape will be in port until 6 p.m., while the Carnival Glory, again, until 6 p.m., but the Carnival Magic will, uh, will arrive early and remain until 7 p.m. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Well, we saw a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms earlier in the day, but it's really begun to clear out. As we take a look at the current satellite from far out, you can see Ian out here off to our northeast, not really causing any issues for us here. We're sitting in a pretty much a dry area of weather and take a look as we go a little bit closer. Not too much to actually be looking at. All right, let's take a look at our forecast for tonight. 79 degrees for your low, mainly clear skies. Now we can't rule out a passing trade wind shower or two. But for the most part, we're going to be seeing some clear skies. Into tomorrow, we go back to that normal pattern of those trade wind showers moving through the area. But mostly sunny, 90 degrees. That dry air definitely sticking around, even around St. Thomas, 90 degrees. Mostly sunny skies there as well. Into St. Croix, we're seeing very similar weather as well. 90 degrees, mostly sunny. Maybe a passing trade wind shower or two. As we take a look at your water conditions on the Atlantic side, 
alongside those waves, 2 to 4 feet, and winds out of the east, 5 to 10 knots. Definitely a nice day to get out onto the water. As we go out to the Caribbean side, those winds, they pick up just a little bit out of the east, 10 to 50 knots, so slightly windy, but really nothing small crafts should be worried about. Waves at 2 to 4 feet as well. As we go into your extended forecast, we'll continue to see that drier air from Thursday into Friday. Come Friday, though, a tropical wave is going to move through. That's just going to increase our moisture just a little bit. We'll be seeing some of those showers become more numerous throughout the weekend as well. But by Monday, we're going to go back into a normal trade wind pattern. Temperatures into the upper 80s, looking like a nice way to end your weekend. Back to you, Sandy. Thanks for that. Let's take a look at our weather picture there by Anaja Brown, fourth grader representing the E. Benjamin Oliver Elementary School. And Anaja says, welcome to the VI, where it's so nice, which is why visitors love our sun, sand, and sea. And Anaja includes some sunshine, of course. Thank you for that. Send us your useful weather picture to the address right there on the screen. Be sure to include your name, age, school, and a brief description of your work of art. And tune in to see it right here on News 2. That is all for this.